We are all familiar with the modern scientific consensus regarding the beginning of the universe, namely the Big Bang model. Space and time were simultaneously created in an infinitesimal point and the universe has been expanding ever since, right? Wrong. In reality, the simplified model we are all taught is conceptually missing key details needed to physically explain many of the observations in the universe we see today. A simple hot Big Bang model leads to non-physical parameters for fundamental constants of nature, as well as predicts extra particle species which we are yet to observe. This video discusses three such problems caused by the Big Bang theory, and also how scientists have had to tweak and alter the standard cosmological model in order to fix them. Let's get straight into it, with firstly what's known as the horizon problem. To begin with, let's define the horizon scale as the physical distance between two points in space, which are close enough to be in causal contact with each other. Put simply, we know that light is the fastest moving thing in nature, so if we work out the maximum distance that light could have travelled since the beginning of the universe, around 13.8 billion years ago, to now, that gives us the horizon scale. Objects which are physically separated by more than that distance apart could not have interacted with each other, since there has not been enough time since the beginning of the universe that a photon of light could have travelled from one to the other, and hence no way that any other particle or entity could have done so either. Therefore, these two objects lie outside of each other's horizons, and so they could have not physically affected each other. Scientifically, we call this relationship as not being in causal contact, since an event in one location cannot cause an effect in the other. The Big Bang model predicts that in early times, the universe was really hot, which in turn meant that almost all particle species behaved relativistically. By this I mean they all behaved massless and so travelled at the speed of light, due to the sheer amount of thermal energy available to them at that time. This is known as the radiation dominated era, and due to the way matter behaved, this controlled the expansion rate of the universe or space-time itself. Hence, cosmologists can work out how far photons can travel in this era, based on the assumptions from the Big Bang model. Usually, when the universe cooled to a certain temperature, it was cold enough for neutral atoms to form in what's known as recombination. Here, most particle species stopped behaving relativistically, and is ultimately what caused the cosmic microwave background radiation, or CMB, which is so famously studied today. I've made a video already on the CMB and the meaning of this photo which you are free to check out after this video, but here we could use it as essentially a snapshot of the universe at the end of the radiation dominated era. Cosmologists are able to work out when the CMB last scattering surface should have been formed, and can then combine this with physical horizon size growth rate in the radiation dominated era to work out the maximum horizon size at the time of the CMB. I won't go into the maths, but essentially the result is that areas on the CMB which are separated by an angular size of more than around 2 degrees are outside of each other's horizon. I'll draw an example 2 degrees horizon around a point on the photo for clarity. What this means is that under the assumptions of the Big Bang, every point outside of this circle from its centre cannot possibly be in causal contact with the centre. This is where the problem arises. Looking at the CMB temperature and isotropy spectrum, we observe it to differ by around only one part in 10,000. Put simply, even though this image appears to have high levels of contrast, the difference in temperature between the hottest and coldest parts is less than a 1,000th of a degree Celsius. Hence we can safely say that the CMB is mostly homogeneous and all parts are in thermal equilibrium with each other. For all parts of a system to reach thermal equilibrium, they must be in causal contact. However, we worked out from the Big Bang model that not all parts can possibly be in causal contact at the time of the CMB. This is the horizon problem, as the simple hot Big Bang should instead predict that only areas within the horizons be causally connected, and so the CMB should not show temperature equilibrium. Moving on, next up we have the flatness problem. The argument for this stems from the nature of the universe and its values for physical parameters. Physics is made up of plenty of mathematical constants. Most famously, we have Big G, Newton's gravitational constant, c, the speed of light, h, Planck's constant, e, the electron charge, I could go on for ages. These constants quantify the universe and provide a scale for the size of interactions we experience. Although many of these numbers are really small, they have natural sorts of magnitudes, which work on quantum scales as well as on universal scales. For example, the smallest possible distance allowed by quantum mechanics is the Planck length, which is around 1.6 times 10 to the minus 35 meters. So provided constants which have length dimensions are larger than that, they're natural and not surprising in our physical models. That was quite a rough explanation, there's more to it than that, however the point remains. So now let's look at the Friedman equation, which can be derived from general relativity as well as from classical mechanics, and it describes the expansion rate of the universe. The key term for my argument is k, the curvature. k has dimensions of reciprocal length squared or inverse area, and quantifies whether spacetime is flat, hyperbolic or spherical which leads to a closed or open universe. 
I've also made a video discussing this in more detail before, but the main point is that K describes how the universe will grow and eventually end. We can define a density parameter for curvature by dividing K by the critical density of a flat universe. This can be done for other quantities of the Friedman equation, such as the matter density, radiation density, and dark energy density parameters. These densities evolve over time, but the key thing is they all have relatively the same magnitude. For instance, modern observations of light curves, CMB or BAO, indicate that the curvature density parameter should be zero, or at least very close to zero. Let's assume for a moment that the universe is not spatially flat, and currently has curvature density parameter close to zero but not exactly zero. Using the assumptions of the Big Bang model, we can work backwards and work out what the value of this parameter should be in early times, right after the Big Bang occurred. Doing so gives a value extremely close to zero, but not zero, as it could never reach zero, otherwise the universe would always remain flat. By close to zero, I mean of the order of 10 to the minus 80, or 0 0.00000, 80 odd zeros, and then a 1. Obviously, this is an unphysical value, and requires the fine tuning of one part within 10 to the minus 80, to ensure the universe grows and evolves to how we see it today. I hope you can see that this cannot possibly be the case. The necessary precision is even greater than the Planck scale, which we know is the smallest physical size allowed in nature. Hence the Big Bang model leads to the flatness problem. The last problem I'm going to discuss before I discuss solutions is the relic particle abundance problem. This arises since the hot Big Bang model also supports the idea of GUTs, or Grand Unified Theories. This is where the strong nuclear, weak nuclear and electromagnetic forces were once the same due to the high temperatures at early times. Then, as time goes on and the universe expands and cools, these forces undergo symmetry breaking and split into three separate fundamental forces. Once again, I've made a video discussing symmetry breaking in the context of electroweak theory, which you are free to check out. But in this context, due to the nature of how radiation cools and also how the hot Big Bang predicts the radiation-dominated era should have lasted for a fairly long time, one should expect massive particles from a grand unified force to persist and come to dominate the universe. Essentially, this leads to predictions that there should be an abundance of these massive particles, or magnetic monopoles from early times. I appreciate that this explanation is fairly hand-wavy, but it's difficult to explain without spending an eternity discussing GUTs and most of cosmology first. It's nonetheless a problem of the Big Bang Theory, as we of course do not detect or observe any magnetic monopoles, or massive particles, as was predicted. Okay, that wraps up the three problems I wanted to discuss, so now let's talk about how the Big Bang model has been changed and reworked in order to fix them. First of all, it's worth noting that if the universe is spatially flat, i.e. k equals zero, then the flatness problem isn't an issue, since flat universes stay flat, and so k will always have remained zero, which isn't an issue. However, that's a fairly large assumption considering today's measurements of k being close to, but perhaps not equal to zero. The main resolution comes in the form of inflation. This manifests as an energy density in the early universe, known as inflaton, which drives exponential expansion for an extremely short time. The standard Big Bang model predicts the horizon size to grow linearly with time. However, with inflation causing exponential expansion, there is a possibility for the horizon to cover the entire CMB sky at the time of recombination, if the expansion was 1, strong enough, and 2, lasted just long enough. This then solves the horizon problem, as the CMB sky would be in causal contact, hence makes sense to be in thermal equilibrium. The idea of inflation might be difficult to get your head around, the key aspect is that right after the Big Bang, the universe contained an unknown substance known as inflaton, which caused exponential space-time growth for a very short time. Having this period of inflation also solves the flatness problem, as it can produce an expansion greater than what's needed to avoid having a non-physical and non-zero curvature density parameter value at early times. This also requires the inflaton to eventually decay into particles, which can't be too massive, otherwise they dominate today. This means the inflation period cannot be too hot. Inflation also solves the relic particle abundance problem, since the period of rapid expansion would dilute the density of any massive particles from GUTs. Essentially, the space between any of these particles would increase so drastically that the overall density of them is decreased to a negligible value, hence they wouldn't be expected to dominate or be abundant today, which is what we observe. Inflation can be thought of as an add-on to the standard hot Big Bang model, and fixes the main conceptual problems caused by it. Inflation is also postulated by GUTs, and so has become a cornerstone in modern cosmological models. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It's free, it helps out my channel a bunch, and you can always unsubscribe. See you next time.